Well, what's on my mind? I'm actually sleeping a little bit, but um, I'm having a hard time going to sleep because I have my grandmother on my mind. Um, her anniversary, her two year anniversary is getting ready to hit. Um, and I'm really, really starting to feel some kind of way. Um, I just want you guys to know when you have someone in your life that really loves you and appreciates you and take you for who you are, regardless of what it is, regardless of what you've done, they still love you and they don't give up on you. They don't stop talking to you, but they pray for you. You keep that person around. You don't take advantage of that person and you show them that same love that they given you. Let me tell you something. I didn't know how to love. I didn't know how to be loyal. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. Let's keep it real. All of us at some point of time have never have, have um betrayed someone before. We haven't been as loyal as we claim we have been. I've been one of those that have hurt many people because of my unloyalty. You know, but now I am a very loyal person. Um I didn't um, really know how to love anyone. I gave people hell per se. Um, I had anger issues. I did a whole lot of stuff that I shouldn't have done. You know, I've been to prison. I've lost my children. I, I have two boys that I lost to the system. Um, trying to commit robberies and larcenies. Um, do I regret it? No. The reason I don't regret it is because that is what shaped me into the woman I am today. That has shaped my life. Um, and, and, and it has made me the woman that I am today. Um, and it's given me such a strong testimony to share with people you know so um i'm sorry y'all i just came out here on the port um on my back this is like my little back storage room because my kids are asleep and i you know i didn't i don't want to wake them up um but i just want you guys to know that you know she loved me through my problems she loved me through my hate she loved me through everything my disrespect the way that i talked to her the way i didn't respect her title you know um she loved me through it and i don't think people really understood or understand what she meant to me she broke me down with love y'all you understand me I didn't know how to love. I didn't even know what the meaning was because I never seen it walked out in front of me. You know, nobody showed me what that looked like. I grew up in an, in an, in watching stuff. I don't want to put it out there because I don't want to put my biological mother on blast either. I just don't want to do that on what I saw. I saw her go through some things. I seen... um. You know, I, I and I've done some things myself, you know what I'm saying? But there was one thing that devastated me that I really told the truth about and I wasn't believed. And that broke me. It broke my, it broke my spirit. It broke something in me. And I didn't know how to come out of that. I was in a deep hole. I didn't know how to come out. So I acted out. And then I went to Job Corps. Six months later, I get kicked out for fighting the supervisor of the Job Corps or the the, the head of the Job Corps. I, I don't remember if he's the supervisor or the head. or I, You know what? I don't really remember who he was, but I want to say the supervisor. Um, I was doing unnecessary stuff. I was doing trifling stuff. You know, I heard people that I know loved me. You know, I heard cousins. You know, it's the past now and they have forgiven me. Thank God for showing, for giving us um, forgiveness, the heart of forgiveness. But I hurt people. 
I have done some things. And if you are one of them watching this, I ask you to please forgive me for it. Anything I've done, even if you have forgiven me for it, I'm asking you straight up to forgive me now because there are a lot of things that I know I have done because I wasn't free up here. I was, I had mental slavery. I was locked up here. You know, I was locked up behind gates, but I was locked up in my mind more than I was locked up behind those gates. And that's what kept me locked down. But when I got... When I found God and I got my mind cleared and I started processing through my hurt and all of that, it was painful. It was painful. It sure was. It was very painful. But when I processed all of that through and I saw who really touched me in such a way, it was my grandmother. They call her Mother Hash, Grandma Hash, Mama Hash. I call her Love Love. She was my Love Love. This woman broke me down with love. All she did was love on me. She would sit there and rub her knees and she would just love on me. She would tell she would play with me. I believe out of all the grandkids, I was the one. Of course, we all think, you know, I, I think I'm a special one. <laughs> they about to get me with that one. But, you know, grandma was my boo. You know, I called her that. You know, she has a title. She was Mother Hash, the matriarch, the one that was above it all. You know what I'm saying? But she was my boo, my love, love. And I have family that can vouch for that. You know, she let me say things to her that she would not let nobody else say. Trust me, you know, she said a lot of things um, and, and, and she would be like, now, you know, I like to play with you a lot because she I don't know. I guess she 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 kind of came out her character a little bit with me. And, I'm, you know, now that I'm looking back, she would say stuff like I'm sorry, somebody's texting. She would say stuff like um, like. You know, I like to play with you a lot. I don't know why, but I like to play with you a lot. Grandma came out her character with me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't treat her like I don't I don't know. And then and then if if she gave me something and I really didn't like it, I'd be like, "No, grandma, but I thank you though." You know what I'm saying? I didn't take everything she gave me. I wish I did because now I would have had those things. But if I didn't like it, I'll be like, no, grandma, I don't like it. But everybody else, even if they didn't like it, they would take it. You know what I'm saying? I would just be like, no, she liked to play in my hair. So every time I would come see her, and this was before she even got sick. This was when I first got out of prison. I know I might be jumping a little bit, but this, this video is really talking about the impact she made on my life. You know, when I would um, come over there, you know. If you go through my Facebook post or if you know me in person, I like to do different colors in my hair. So she would always um, look at me and say, oh, you got a different color in. And um, she would say, let me feel it. So I would lean over and she would just rub my hair. You know what I'm saying? I would even tickle her face with it. I said, look, grandma, look, look, look. I would even tickle her face with it. You know what I'm saying? Grandma was she called me her angel she said i was her angel but really grandma you are my angel and the sweetest thing about this is i was able to tell my grandmother all of this before she died i'm i'm trying not to cry you know but i was able to tell her how much i loved her i was able to tell her how much she meant to me and vice versa you know she always told me before you die I want to see you with your kids. Boom. She saw that. She was like, before I die, I want to see you get saved. Boom. She saw that. She was like, before I die, I want to see you in a house. Boom. She saw that. Not only did she see one house, she saw two houses. You know what I'm saying? Um, Before I die, I want to see this. I want to see that. And I made it my goal, y'all, to do everything she asked. I may not have wanted it. I didn't want to be saved at the time. Shoot, I was out there trying to do my thing, keeping it real. 
You know what I'm saying? But I am grateful that she came into my life and she knew how to, she knew how to change me without changing me. She knew how to let God do what he going to do, but she knew how to, I can't, I can't describe it. I really can't describe it, but I want you guys to know that blue was my favorite color. The family notice everybody that know me notice blue is my favorite color but now purple has became my favorite ever since she died i rock purple no matter what my nails is, my nails is pink and yellow but look i got purple in that yellow you know what i'm saying i got purple in the yellow i got purple in my hair my hair is purple you can't really see it that good you know um my car is purple you know um different things that I buy is purple you know because it represents my grandmother and the reason that I changed my car in, into purple um, and took the blue out was because I feel like she's with me wherever I go and that purple that color something so simple as a color reminds me of her so I just wanted to come on here and do my first video ever to let you guys know that if you have someone in your life that sees past your dirt, sees past your mess, sees past, and I'm I'm not talking about God, y'all. I'm talking about someone earthly. I'm talking about somebody because they're rare to find. You understand me? They are rare to find. So when you have someone that's in your life that's trying to guide you in the direction, stop acting like you know it all because you don't. They've been here longer than you. You know, stop and just just appreciate the love that they bring to you appreciate if you have a mother appreciate her if you have a father appreciate him especially if they're doing right by you you know appreciate the people that's in your life whether it's friends whether it's your grandma whether it's your cousin sister i don't care who it is appreciate them don't take anyone for granted. Life is too short. There are too many people out here dying. Senseless death. Senseless. Senseless death. You know what I'm saying? I made it to see 42 on yesterday. I know I look like 28. <laughs> but really, I made it to see 42 on yesterday. And, but back in the day, I was told that I wouldn't live to see past 23. I was told that I'm not going to say who said it or nothing because I'm not ready to get that personal with Facebook or YouTube yet. But I was told that I was told that I wasn't going to make it. I was told I was ugly by the very people that I trusted and that I loved. I was told that I would never be anything in life. I was told that they washed their hands from me. I was abused. There, there's so much I can tell you, you know. But I had a grandmother and I didn't just have a grandmother. I had a spiritual mother. I had a mother that prays, that prayed for me. Whether you believe in God or not, prayer works. Whether you believe in God or not, I had this woman pray for me on many occasions, many occasions. But I'm here to tell you, don't take advantage this world has got to get back to morals and we got to get back to loyalty. Loyalty is missing. And that's why we're out here acting up and killing each other. And we're angry all the time because we don't have nobody to be loyal to us. But I'm going to tell you something. Here, I'm loyal. I'm loyal to my friends. I'm loyal to my family now. And it ain't no change in that. But I'm going to tell you who taught me that outside of my grandmother god okay because i had to get change my heart and i had to give get my give my heart up and i had to give my heart to him am i right no do i do everything right no i do a lot of stuff wrong still you know what i'm saying but i know that there is a god and i know that my grandmother is rooting for me and i know other people is rooting for me and i refuse to let them down so i'm here to just tell you one more time if you have someone in your life that sees past everything stop being so hardcore and let them break you down with love because that's what we need one love one god one blood you know we all bleed the same we all bleed the same 
you know, love each other, man. Grandma has a legacy of love, and that's what she taught us to do. We may not be as tight as we used to be when Grandma was around, but she left a legacy of love behind, and that's all she said. Love each other. Love one another. Love, love, love. Everything was love for her, and she died with her last breath. Her last breath telling me this is what she told me and I have family that can verify this love yourself because that's where it all starts when you love yourself and when she was in a hospital she looked at me and she said Aisha now she done she called the grandkids in she done gave all the grandkids a word all the grandkids she done gave them a word now powerful words big long words and then she looked at me because I had left out the room and I came back in. I have family that can verify this. And when I came back in, she said, where were you? I was looking for you. I don't remember what I was doing. I said, well, grandma, I was here. I said something like that. And she said, I just want you to be good. That was it. That That's my word. I just want you to be good. Now, she done gave all you know everybody else i think it was two or three in the room she gave them their words and it was so heartfelt and touching and you know at first i was like darn i wish i had a word like they did but you know what when i got home i realized those were the most powerful words anybody has ever told me because i knew what she meant by that when she said be good and I want to end this. It's, it's long. I didn't mean to be on here but for 10 minutes. But I want to end it by saying this. And dedicating this to my grandma. I am being good. And I'm going to continue to be good. I have my flaws. I have my faults. I'm not 100% perfect. But every day I'm striving to be better. Every day I'm striving to be better. People. Whoever is watching this. If anybody, I don't know, people may just skip the video and not see it. If you have someone in your life that loves you regardless of who you are, what you've done, what you've been through, don't take them for granted. Let that love break you down because it's something at the end of that. Your heart changes, and when your heart changes, you see life differently. And that's when you really become a woman or a man. It's when that heart changes. I thought I was a woman at, at when I got my own place when I was younger. Nah, honey, I didn't become a woman until the age of 32. That's when I became grown. I don't care what y'all say. Half of y'all 30-something years old, 40, 50 years old, and still ain't grown. Because you're still doing the same stuff. But grandma, I love you, man. And you know it. And there were times that I, if I didn't have my kids, I felt like I would have been in the grave with you. Because nobody understood. I don't think, I don't even think the family understands how much, how much you really meant to me.